for the day. You know, just salute the uh, Deb Anthony when she just, you know, watch the rest of the Math Hoffa uh, podcast with the Math Hoffa. I really like what he's doing in the game and in the hip hop space because it seems like he's getting those real interviews that you're not going to really get on Vlad TV. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. And Vlad TV is doing his thing, but Mav Hoffa seems like the biggest threat to Vlad TV. Does that make sense? But I no, think no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. It's, Mav Hoffa is big threat to like Joe Button. I think the reason why I don't think it's Joe Button because Mav Hoffa is a more interview based podcast. Mm -hmm. Joe Button is more of a personality based podcast. Joe Button people come to watch Joe Button. People not watching to see who Joe Button's bringing on today. But I don't think none of them people um competition to Vlad got like five million subs, bro. No, nah, that's a fact, but <laughs> you it's got a you got a long that's a, that's a wild, bro. Let me see um Okay. What about what about Gilly? Do you think he can do you think he's a threat to Gilly's algorithm? Oh yes, de definitely but Jada kisses definitely who a Gilly threat to Gilly and them because he more real. Gilly and them is like silly. Yeah, you gotta loosen real up at wanna, you gotta loosen up at Gilly shit. Yeah, yeah you gotta. Real niggas don't want to see no silly ass shit. Yeah, yeah. So Mav Hoffa get the you're real. You're not gonna really get these stories for real. Yeah, Mav Hoffa coming up fast though. He got seven hundred. He almost got seven fifty. That's what I'm saying. That's why I asked you. I'm like, I be kind of, I peep. I'm, I'm fuck with Mav Hoffa. That's why I asked you. I'm like, you know, he Ooh. can be fucking with Vlad. Cause see, the thing about you know Barstool, like the the advertisement, New Amsterdam, like it, it's it's a lot of it's kind of commercial and salute because you know it's. You get advertisement shit, but it's kind of in a way commercialized sometimes when you listen to Gilly's podcast. But it's cool because I can enjoy certain interviews. But the dynamics are different from a Math Hoffa. Math Hoffa is it gives me more of a Vlad vibe where niggas can really get in a street bag. Niggas can really get in a like hip hop, like I'm like getting a real, you know what I'm saying? You may be right about that because you know why? Because Vlad got a problem getting the real niggas on his show. That and then it's, it's not only getting the real niggas, it's like, Math Hoffa can get the like the Tony Yayo interview or the Dev Annie interview or like the tons of other interviews he's gotten from from rappers and artists. The, the baby interview, niggas gotta be like real niggas when they come. Is that New York vibe? Is this a certain respect? Like I want to see, I like to see people in that element. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not in the Vlad where okay, I'm talking to somebody outside of the culture, but it's the Vlad interview. So you know, I'm I'm it, it's a you know how you gotta. Cause everybody code switches. Regard, you know, niggas say, uh, you know, in a good way. You know how you got to walk into the Mav Hoffa podcast mm -hmm. and the type of questions and how you got to answer. Even if you play in theatrics too, I like that element in hip hop. I don't give a, like Vlad. I like what he brings because it's not being met anywhere else at the capacity in the clip. Vlad, Vlad is doing it. That's what you're saying. To where it's like, yo, Vlad's kicking out so much on a daily basis. You're not gonna get to it. But at the point where you can have somebody that's at least a viable like alternative, Mav Hoffa is creeping up pretty quickly on just having certain names and having those candid conversations that Vlad is more going to just ask questions where in the Mav Hoffa shit, niggas is really Deb Antner. Some of these people can get in a bag and go on those rants and really get it off. And it's more serious in a way than even a drink champs. That shit, yeah, drink champs are just so contrived. But yeah, Mav Hoffer, he he got some steam on him. Yeah, he I'm surprised he caught steam that fast, but yeah, he got some steam on him. Like, yeah, he coming for a big position in that media space. And, you know, it moves in cycles, man. That's just yeah, what it, it does. is. It moves in cycles. It does. But at the same time, you gotta think, bro, when, when Breakfast Club was that spot at one point. Now it's like, who cares? Yeah, and but that's the crazy thing about it, where it was a time where even if niggas didn't want to go to the breakfast club, that's the only option they had because there wasn't anything else to go to. There wasn't anything else to see. So you, you've seen a lot of, to me, you've seen a lot of artists and a lot of people that came on the breakfast club and they didn't really get a chance to like get their artistry out or get their projects off. It was a lot of goofy shit. that used to go down in those interviews, which was kind of funny sometimes if the artists can like go ahead and like play around. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like it was a lot of times on the Breakfast Club interviews where it was just bullshit, man. And I appreciate what they did though in the space because I think what they really showed in the space of what they did was that niggas can get around and have conversations. It was bullshit, but the people that went up there and, and disarmed the motherfucker, Dame Dash, Fredo Bang, 
it's a couple of people ran circles on the Breakfast Club. It's crazy. I think now we can really have like the top Breakfast Club interviews and shit of all time. And to Dame me, Dame Dash is the best. Dame Dash is the most. To me, it's the number one interview on the Breakfast Club history. I can I can clearly say that Dame Dash interview uh, was a catalyst into altering the way I moved him the rest of my life. Yeah, I think that's the only Breakfast Club interview I ever saw where people actually start changing their damn life and their conversation. Every other video, like whatever, but. Dame Dash, that was the. And when they talk about Dame Dash, and this is one thing that I don't appreciate, but they're never going to say it, but it's for us to say it. One thing they're never going to say about Dame Dash is that he has made a more positive impact on the black community than a lot of your favorite Negroes. I thought you were going to say then Jay-Z. No, because I feel like Jay-Z has inspired a certain demographic, too. I feel like Jay-Z has inspired a lot of people worldwide. But I'm giving Dame Dash credit for the Breakfast Club interview and after that. But the Breakfast Club interview sparking the minds of people to understand that if you're not owning something, if you're not going to be an entrepreneur, dog, you don't have anything. You, you don't have any legacy. You don't have anything passed down to. I think that changed Envy's life. I think that changed Charlemagne's life. I think that changed... Uh, 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 and Angela Yee's life, I think that changed everybody. I, yeah, because up to that point, I think they had rocked everybody to sleep with the silly shit, and nobody really wasn't thinking about nothing. So after the, he came on there, then they start having the boys walking yo, come on, the real estate agent come on. Envy start getting in, in his real estate bag. It, yeah. uh, you Charlemagne started. Oh, I gotta get a, I gotta get the podcast network. It started giving niggas a different set of mind think uh, of a different mindset because. They were really trying to play Dame Dash in the interview, and Dame Dash just came back and snapped back at him and was just like, bro, like, no, y'all not going to play me. Y'all want to talk about who y'all want to talk about. This is what I own. This is what I, this is what I do. My son owns cookies. Oh, oh, if you want to talk shit, oh, can, your, can you leave here and get us to your son? Oh, you can't? So so you just a worker. Charlamagne, what you got to say? You just a worker, too. Oh, Angela, you, you all you niggas, my son owns cookies, nigga. My son owns cookies. Yeah. Nigga was, told them niggas, bro, you can't give you can't pass this down. See, people in here talk about bird, man. Oh, since no, nah, salute Las Vegas Sport Talk. That was a monumental uh the Birdman interview is pretty big too, because the Birdman interview was kind of reminding them niggas like, bro, like put some respect on my name. And also, like, I'm not coming here to play with y'all, dog. Like, like what y'all got going on, man. Y'all ain't gonna use me as no punchline. And it did exactly what Birdman wanted to do, wanted it to do because keeping it a buck nobody else as a direct media face outlet played with Birdman's name after that Kanye West had a dope interview his first one up there was crazy too yeah but he can tell Charlamagne was trying to bait him and he took that out on Sway like the next like five minutes because he literally left that interview and went to go see Sway and like he just took that out on Sway honestly uh, but that was a pretty good interview but to me that was one of the first interviews where Kanye started mentioning all those high flute and white people that he wanted to aspire to be. And I look at it two ways. One way it was like, Hey, research these people that I'm naming and see how much they own and see how much money they got, bro. Like we need to stop talking about, we trying to get like two to 5 million and we straight, bro. We trying to get, we trying to own all this shit. So I think it was a double edged sword. Certain people, the hater, the detractors like, Oh, Kanye's mentioned all these white people. Why don't he name none of these niggas? Cause he's like, none of these niggas ever owned this type of shit. So you gotta aspire to be some these these uh Bernard on Oak motherfuckers who own Louis V and everything that you niggas buy and aspire to be. He owns all of it. That's who I'm trying to get my paper up to. I'm not trying to get my paper to be up to a couple M's. I'm trying to get a couple B's. And he was a hundred percent right. Now that we look at where we at now, it's like yo, we don't own nothing. We getting kicked out of certain places. Like, yeah, he was right. So Kanye, in a sense, he had a great point. But at the end of the day, uh, that was one of the best interviews. The what was it? The uh, what was it? Little Mama interview. That was kind of funny. The Mama interview was a little, yeah, that was a cool interview. But I'm gonna tell you, you had the the one, the last hottest interview that come hit the Breakfast Club. Who's six nine? Six nine. Yeah, man. But that was, man. That's even that's an indictment on the Breakfast Club in itself. That was the hottest thing. After that, they ain't really had nobody hotter since then. Umar Johnson, he just blew it up up there. Yeah, he did. But you know, Breakfast Club usually. Honestly, the reason why Breakfast Club was so hot because that was the only black media outlet. Like everybody you see, Gilly, Math, 
any Charleston White, like Charleston White would have been on the Breakfast Club by now if this was five years ago. But because Charleston White can go to so many platforms and they're going to pay him to, to, to fly out and get on their podcast and give them numbers, he's not coming on the fucking Breakfast Club. It's like, why am I coming on? What am I coming on there to do if y'all ain't about to give me a bag? And if you don't give me a bag, like, I don't give a fuck. Charleston White charged five racks to do anything with. And speaking of give me a bag, the um, cash app is in the bottom of the screen. Yeah, we got the official cash app up for the show. And make sure you get a like, get a share in. 